What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon. The Earth Master here on this uh, Tuesday, January 18th date, 2022 is the uh, year of course. T Tuesday about 11.40 a.m. California time. A little bit of activity ramping up here around the Philippine plate with a latest earthquake on the Earthquake 3D Globe, a 5.0 earthquake. Uh, we did uh, see the USGS sneak in a 5.2 earthquake down here close to the Antarctica area uh, within the last few minutes, but this earthquake occurring prior to the 5.0 up there in the Philippines area. So a little bit of a late reporting there from the USGS, but hey, better late than never, right? Let's go ahead and check out the latest information here from the uh, folks here at the USGS on their all magnitudes map, or at least uh, for the most part along the uh, states and territories zoom that up here there is the 5.0 in the philippines area this one's pretty deep 191 kilometers uh, just south of taiwan area i've uh, seen some pretty deep movement here along the western part of the plate boundary a little bit of activity here to the east as well that was somewhat deep into the uh, mariana trench northward or at least south of japan trench in this little uh, subduction zone that 4.7 was 32.4 kilometers uh, some further activity up here to the north uh, deeper movement. Actually, this one's pretty shallow here. 4.5 uh, near the Russia area, 10 kilometers, and somewhat of a deeper earthquake here along the uh, uh, portion of the Kuro Kamchaka Trench at 4.3 uh, 4 for the magnitude at 35 kilometers uh, below the surface. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on down here on the southern part of the hemisphere. Seen a couple fives kick up here around the Pacific Antarctic Ridge and also uh, west of the uh, uh, Macquarie Island out there. Let's look at this one here. Uh, looks like about uh, 8.3 kilometers for this 5.1. And we had a 5.2 that the USGS, like I mentioned, just snuck in uh, on the earthquake uh, 3D globe. This one occurring well over an hour ago, but uh, they finally got to it by putting it up on the map. It's a little bit of adjustment down here along these southern sections of the plates. Uh, it's kind of a, a newer deal. We haven't seen a whole lot of movement there over the last seven days. Or so as you can see here on the seven day all magnitude map uh, just a little just those two earthquakes from today in that region let's go ahead and check up around the Tonga area things kind of well kind of iffy at the moment not seeing a whole lot of movement uh, looking at a sh pretty shallow earthquake up here northwest of the Tonga area 4.8 not a whole lot of deeper movement to report in this region today I'm sure that will change pretty quickly Activity ramping up throughout the Indonesia area, stretching up to Philippines uh, with uh, the majority of these quakes, if not all of them, deep. Look at the depths here of these earthquakes, uh, definitely below 100. Some of them closing in on 200 kilometers uh, below the surface there for that uh, deeper activity ramping up there in that region. Uh, out here around the China area, a little bit of movement as well. Looks like uh, 4.9 uh, around the India border. That was uh, from last night. Since then, we have seen a little bit of activity uh, over here to the west, including a 5.1 in the Turkey area. <clears throat> that was late last night as well, so not a whole lot of renewed movement, at least this morning in this area. The uh, North Atlantic and the South Atlantic Ocean, all pretty quiet. Antarctic, or the uh, Greenland and Iceland area, quiet as well, according to the USGS. We are watching and monitoring a little cluster of quakes here into the Peru uh, Chile Trench. Uh, some of this movement uh, pretty deep at that as well. 223 kilometers for at least one of them and uh, 100 or so kilometers deep for the uh, others. So uh, kind of paying attention here for possible large scale movement. This area of course seen a pretty large uh, seven pointer up here uh, within the last couple months up around the northern Peru region. We've been watching uh, slowly throughout the weeks uh, migration of quakes down along the Peru Chile Trench uh, and some of it deep so we got to pay attention to this region here uh, for some uh, potential larger scale movement around the Chile area uh, Puerto Rico area looking uh, well, pretty active there's a 3.8 right smack dab on the Puerto Rico Trench 82 kilometers and some deeper movement back over to the west as well Overall, it's been pretty active over the last week within this region uh, with some swarming, kicking up, stretching up towards the trench area and also around the Dominican Republic. 
uh, where we've seen a uh, latest quake of 3.6 in that area. Over here around the Middle America Trench, just off the coast of Mexico, 4.6, 14.3 kilometers into the, uh, the trench region. Looking at the states, seeing a little bit of uptick in movement. Uh, we got one little earthquake here around the New Madrid zone, 2.5 near Steele, Missouri, at 8.2 kilometers below the surface. And Oklahoma and Texas area getting in on some uh, operation or uh, some earthquakes out there as well. Nothing significant yet, just a couple twos. Uh, up through the Intermountain West regions, we are seeing a little heightened activity kick up here along the west coast of the uh, North American continent here, including some activity down here in the southern part of the state. Seeing a 3.5 earthquake here in the San Jacinto Mountains last night, uh, well, early this morning, late last night, early this morning, uh, 3.5 in this area. Now, the San Jacinto Fault Zone does run through here. There's certain sections uh, that do uh, kind of break off, but they're also, uh, this here is kind of like a, a little bit of a different overview. You can see the sectional uh, San Jacinto fault systems here uh, off to the left. And also uh, looks like some other faults over here way off to the uh, east of the Palm Springs area, close to the San Andreas fault zone. But uh, we have been watching a pretty good swarm of movement here within this region. Let's go ahead and bring back the seven days all magnitudes. And you can see uh, uh, swarming not only down on the southern section, uh, but also in the northern section here where we've seen that 3.5. So a little bit of activity heightened in this region of Southern California. Of course, swarming activity could prelude a larger earthquake, not all the time. But uh, it is a good indicator of some building up of pressure. Uh, in this region so I got to pay attention to the Southern California area uh, as well a little earthquake within the last hour 2.4 up near the Big Bear City area 3.9 kilometers uh, below the surface and also some scattered activity up and down other sections of this spider web complex of faults here in the uh, Pacific side of the plate boundary around the Los Angeles concrete jungles a little bit of movement some uh, Microquakes kicking up out there. Uh, East LA looking at uh, 1.5 uh, at 15.7 kilometers, somewhat deeper movement there in that part of the jungle. Uh, Ridgecrest area, some activity kicking up along the fracture zone here. And uh, same for up in the northern part of the, uh, of the eastern crest of Sierra Nevadas here along the Long Valley Super Volcano and also up north here. Lake Tahoe getting in on a little bit of activity on the north shore it looks like uh, 0.7 somewhat deeper movement there nine kilometers for that earthquake also a little bit of movement stretching towards the san joaquin valley here around the mariposa area 2.7 at 17 kilometers so a little deeper movement throughout the state and uh, some activity along the creeping section of the san Andreas fault looking at the north part here we've seen some movement kick up here by the usgs they're finally posting some of it not all of it there's definitely a, a bunch more than what these folks are reporting here. They're being a little picky on the earthquakes that they want to report here for some reason, and I'm not for sure why. Uh, it is at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, and the majority of these are subduction zone quakes uh, with the depths there uh, looking at least for one of them below the 20 kilometer depth here into the subduction zone. Some of these other ones right on the Mendocino triple point area uh, with the um, Pacific North American and the Gorda Plate uh, interaction here where it kind of begins here with the uh, Cascadia. Also a little earthquake over here around the uh, Gorda Escarpment. This one well off the coast, 2.9 at 9.6 kilometers. But trust me folks, when I say this, there's definitely more activity occurring there than what those folks are leading on. Into the Cascades, not a whole lot of renewed movement throughout the uh, Pacific Northwest. Some of that activity from last night. Looking at the Intermountain West regions through the, uh, looks like Cedar, Utah and Cedar City. Down here, some activity kicking up in the mountainous areas. Uh, been watching that uh, for a little while kick up. Seems as though that area does kick up when we see increased movement here and pressure as a regional hole along the North American plate. Uh, up through the Canada area, we can go over here to the Earthquakes Canada map and take a look at their general activity up there in the northern part. Looks like a little bit of activity outside of Alaska. Um, little little microquakes kicking up there. 
Not a whole lot to report in the Canada area. Some movement uh, around the BC area south, around Victoria. Uh, just some small microquakes there in the red circles over the last day. Otherwise, uh, Cascadia looks pretty quiet on the northern end of the uh, area off the coast. Uh, what else we got here in Alaska? A little bit of activity throughout the regions. See up into the Gulf of Alaska. And also some uh, deeper earthquake activity into the subduction zone of the uh, Aleutian Trench area. Pacific Plate and North American Plate. Major player in accumulated stress and release of stress in big ways. Uh, nothing significant at the moment, just some threes and twos up there and some deeper activity along the Aleutian Trench. Things pretty quiet. Uh, and of course, we got kind of monitoring this area right here along the uh, J Japan and Kurokamachaka Trench. That area has uh, definitely been building up some pressure for quite a while. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, nothing in the South Sandwich Islands area at the moment. Uh, things pretty quiet. Go ahead and check out the EMSC models here as we're uh, looking at the earthquake data. There we go. These guys showing pretty much the same events down here along the Antarctica plate boundary. And of course that 5.0 around the western part of the Philippine plate activity looks pretty similar to the uh, USGS. Maybe a earthquake, an extra quake up here or two along the uh, Japan Trench that the USGS not reporting. So a little bit of further movement in that region. Tonga area, folks, like I say, kind of watching the Hunga Tonga region. Uh, what do we got up here around this area? Of course, the uh, volcanic activity in the Canary Islands. USGS not reporting too much. A little bit of activity, looks like 4.4 in that region six hours ago around the Canary Islands. Uh, Yellowstone was swarming a little bit last night. Looking at the most recent data, there was some type of event over here along the eastern part of Yellowstone National Park that showed up on numerous stations here. And also here along the middle portion of the uh, of the uh, caldera, you can see, uh, well, let me show you guys, let me zoom in a little bit to the seismograph. This station right here picked it up pretty nicely. Uh, even then, it does not look like a localized quake to this seismograph station, uh, but it is somewhere over here to the east, uh, probably maybe another 50 miles or so, maybe not that far to the east. We've seen some type of event in the three magnitude range, possibly larger uh, within the last few hours. Uh, actually, it looks like it occurred um, uh, about four hours ago. Going to be that quake right there on the USGS map. Bada boom, bada bang. Nothing, nothing being reported up here in any type of magnitude. So, and that uh, threshold there looks like it was at least a 3.0. Uh, when we go to the all magnitudes here, here as well, you can see uh, that these folks are not really reporting anything here in the eastern part where I believe this earthquake struck. We'll see if they add it. Uh, there was little one microquake down here, 1.4, but that is not the signature we're seeing over here along the eastern section of Yellowstone National Park. Uh, that was definitely picked up broadly throughout the region here in Yellowstone. So we'll see. See if these guys uh, get on with the show. Might have to go in there and teach them a little bit about uh, some programming. And Right? They got preliminary earthquake reports that are sent out, but they're not even sending those out anymore. It's all hand-picked. Uh, looking at earthquake activity uh, continuing, though, within the last couple hours here localized. These are localized earthquakes within the vicinity of the borehole area. I uh, can see some microquakes here. Nothing big or significant. There's that uh, earthquake signature, which I believe is a 3.0, but distant from this station, uh, but closer over here towards the eastern side of the parks. Uh, still missing some data over here along the uh, northwest section of the Yellowstone area. Maple Creek finally getting in a little bit of data within the last couple hours, not showing any significant earthquake activity, but uh, still watching it because um, just find it kind of odd when the earthquake activity happens and they uh, they just don't want to post it you know it's like what good what is you know what what's the whole point of having a computer system that puts out preliminary earthquake data if you don't use it or enable it <clears throat> so maybe they just don't want to cause panic and uh, I, I believe firmly that they're hiding the information here 
along the Petrolia area, Northern California region. They've been doing it since the swarming activity here uh, a couple weeks ago. Been watching the live seismographs on the live stream, and you know it's it's pretty obvious they're having earthquake activity. But they only pick out one, maybe out of every ten earthquakes that happened on the live seismograph and post it up. So it, you know, I just find it pretty strange and odd and unprofessional at that. These guys get paid to do a job and they're not doing it. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. A little bit of movement into the Arizona area, south of the border of Utah. Um, just a couple of small microquakes, it looks like, around Kane's Bed, Arizona. Let's see, anything else to report here? Not a whole lot. Uh, like I say, Tonga, watching that pretty closely. Been watching the data buoys out here, seeing if we're seeing any wave height movements or adjustments. This one right here, I don't believe they've reset yet. Uh, stationed out there, outside of the uh, uh, right smack dab in the Philippine plate, it looks like. But uh, they just need to reset that. All other stations look pretty calm. Been watching them pretty closely for any type of adjustments and whatnot on uh, the water height out here, as far as any potential tsunami goes from the continued activity there in the Tonga region, which is still, you know, I don't believe we're, I don't believe we're done with the, uh, the activity yet. So keeping a very close eye on that region. Uh, let's see, what do we got? 65% chance of a C flare. Uh, we did have an M flare kick off overnight. That was, uh, well, it doesn't show it on here, but, uh, here on the solar flare class, we did have an M, I believe it was, a. Uh, yeah, they don't even have it listed on here. It looks like about a 1.8, 1.2, somewhere around there. Current is a C 4.8, but we've seen the threshold break here for an M flare. These guys just have not reported on it yet. And uh, I believe that came from uh, the far side sunspot over here. One of these, uh, it did produce a CME and a pretty long duration one as well, but it is not earth directed. Uh, I don't believe that's going to cause any interference or whatnot with uh, stuff here on Earth. Looking at the last, or at least the next three nights or so, the geomagnetic forecast all looks green. But, again, that can change pretty quickly. Even looking at it right now, things seem to be amplified on the Aurora forecast here when they were hardly calling for anything. So it's kind of crazy to see all this uh, activity really ramping up uh, from the sun when the uh, professionals are calling for calmness and forecast calmness well the sun proves otherwise the d region absorption predictions here d wrap map shows it just off the coast of south america out here in the pacific ocean uh not super heightened but a little bit of activity up there highest frequency affected uh on that map showing well it looks like around the 15 or so mhc all right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Have a great day. Um, live stream is up and running. I did switch over the Earthquake 3D globe to include the plates, the major plate boundaries of the Earth here. And that 5.0 looks like it's striking right there on this major plate, one the uh, the uh, Philippine plate here within this section. Of course, over here, Pacific Ring of Fire. You can follow that all throughout the ocean here now. Uh, kind of a cool deal. It was uh, brought on by a couple of requests there. So we'll keep this globe up for uh, for the extended future. I kind of like the way it looks and uh, get to see the uh, major plate boundaries of the world and how often earthquake activity occurs on them. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.